Over the years of my teaching anatomy, many different players have taken the stage in the role of bad guy. Piriformis is one of those muscle tissues that's been cast in the role of bad guy. And so in this video, I'd like to kind of rehabilitate the reputation of the piriformis muscle tissue. I don't think it's to blame uh, for so many things that is credited for. Let's talk about the piriformis muscle tissue. It's a variable uh, formation of muscle tissue. Sometimes it's a solid thing and sometimes it's divided. And the sciatic nerve can be in variable relationships to that potential. So most typically when I dissect the piriformis, it presents this way. Here's the piriformis muscle tissue and here's the sciatic nerve popping out underneath it. This is from the external perspective looking in at the gluteus, uh, at the gluteal region. So if we look at piriformis and then we look at the sciatic nerve, pretty peaceful relationship there. But sometimes the entire sciatic nerve will kind of pop through the middle and part and part the tissues of the piriformis muscle. And sometimes just part of the sciatic nerve will pop through the middle and then the rest of it will go underneath. I've even seen it the other way where part of it comes over the top and part of it comes into the middle. Pretty much any way you can think of it, it can happen. Now, the fact that the tissues may be arranged this way with the sciatic nerve all or in part passing through the middle of the piriformis doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem. Large nerves pass through muscle tissues all over the body and they're wrapped in a perifascial membrane, both the muscle tissue fasciculi and the nerve. So they have a very slippery relationship. Therefore, there can be differential movement between the nerve and the muscle tissue, regardless of whether it's passing under it or through it, whole or in part. So we can't necessarily blame the piriformis muscle tissue for trouble with regards to the sciatic pain just because it's passing through the middle due to the beautiful membranous wrappings that surround them. So that's not necessarily a problem, these variations. Now, I also want to make clear that there are other neighbors to the piriformis muscle tissue besides the sciatic nerve. So I've made a model, a clay model, and I'll show that to you now. So fancy schmancy model here. Let's look at this. I've got a lot of clay on here. This took me a while today to prepare this to show you that the piriformis muscle tissue here, I have it in orange, right? So we have orange and the piriformis muscle spans from the anterior aspect in here of the sacrum on out towards the greater trochanter to the greater trochanter with the other deep six lateral rotators. But here we just have the piriformis, the orange tissue spanning from the front of the sacrum on back to the, uh, the greater trochanter, which we can't see right now. I didn't model that as well. What's all this other stuff? You can't even see the piriformis. It's buried. Well, we see our sciatic nerve coming out from underneath it here. But what are these things? Well, in yellow, I have the the gluteal nerves. So the superior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal nerve. I also have the inferior gluteal artery and vein and the superior gluteal artery and vein. So these tissues, these vascular and nervous tissues, the inferior pops out from underneath the piriformis and the superior pops out above the piriformis to supply the gluteal muscle tissues, which is the massive tissues here, which aren't modeled, but here are their nerves and arteries. So the piriformis is immediate neighbor to these superior and inferior gluteal arteries, veins, and nerves. Well, what about that? Uh, could they be implicated in pain and ischemia that's being attributed to the piriformis? I think so. So we have this incredibly busy neighborhood here that's not usually 
acknowledged when you're learning the anatomy of the piriformis on a flashcard, right? And you learn, oh, the piriformis is supplied by the piriformis nerve. It doesn't really mean anything to you. Instead, uh, here I'm modeling the gluteal uh, vascular and nerve supply. They're actually the immediate neighbors to the piriformis and perhaps might be brought into consideration when we're wanting to blame the piriformis itself for pain issues in this area. Okay, so now you see that, and I'm going to roll this around the front here so that we can also see, interestingly enough, that there are one, two spinal segments, that's the fourth and fifth lumbar contributing nerve tissue to the sciatic nerve along with the first, second, and third sacral segments. So look at this orange tissue, that's your piriformis here and here, and it's buried, it's buried in the sacral plexus. This isn't all of the sacral plexus, there's more to it, but these are the, the spinal nerves that are contributing to form up the sciatic nerve. Now, notice how they're right on top of the piriformis, and you can actually have tension in your nerves. It could be going the other way around. The sciatic nerve could be giving pain and ischemia to the piriformis rather than the other way around. So I'm just trying to kind of lighten the blame burden on the piriformis for all our woes in our butts. Okay, so I'm just saying there, look at this neighbor, the sciatic nerve, from the anterior aspect, and we see that the piriformis is literally buried in the cords that form the sciatic nerve. And that's something to take into consideration because it is possible for our nerve tree to be hypertonic. Now, I'm going to add one more piece to this. Now, let's say that, in fact, there's hypertonicity, too much tone for our own sensation and movement goodness in the piriformis. Now, why am I holding this table leg from my great aunt's table? Okay, watch. I'm going to balance it on my finger. Okay, I'm balancing. Whoops. Let me do it. There we go. Okay, I'm balancing this table leg on my finger. Imagine the spinal column. Imagine the sacrum to which the piriformis is in relationship at the very bottom of the spinal column here. Okay, so now it starts to go off balance and I grab it because I don't want it to fall. Who's grabbing it? The piriformis. So if we have instability in our spinal column, in, in, our, in our bony core, it could be from instability in the muscular core of the body. So what happens when we have weakness contributing to instability of our core structures? Well, what tends to happen is things tend to grab. So if piriformis is grabbing, grinding away on the piriformis with your elbow or your fist or sitting on a roller, and trying to grind out your piriformis muscle tissue because you're blaming it for pain that's maybe running down your leg, etc. Well, it may be that we need to develop core stability and core strength and core balance to relieve the piriformis of its un of its of a task for which it's not built. It's doing nice, gentle balancing down there, helping an in internal and external uh, rotation uh, of, the, of the femur and of the, at the hip joint, but it's not, it's, it's kind of, think of it like a, a little tiny uh, toy poodle that is suddenly tasked with protecting the whole family. It gets, it gets vicious, okay? A little vicious toy poodle. And, we can devolve our piriformis into the role of a little toy poodle who's been tasked with a job too big for itself. To relieve it of that burden, we can look at our core stability, our core balance, our core strength, develop that, not overdevelop it, but gently develop that. You can look that up on the web. I'm not going to give you lessons on that. But how to kind of create stability in your core in a way that you relieve the piriformis from needing to be uh, a nasty poodle in charge <laughs> of a whole domain that's greater than its 
design is tasked for. So three notes then, variations of the piriformis that don't necessarily result in, in tragedy. Uh, neighbors of the piriformis who are implicated in pain syndromes in your butt and in your, in your sciatic nerve running all the way down your leg, and also uh, looking into core stability as a way of relieving an overtasked piriformis from potentially contributing uh, irritation to the nervous tissues that surround it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.